I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. Welcome to the Black Excellence and Abundance Channel. Henrietta Woods was an American enslaved woman who won the largest verdict ever awarded for slavery reparations in the United States. Born as a slave in Kentucky, but freed as an adult, Woods was later kidnapped and sold back into slavery. After the American War, Woods successfully sued her kidnapper and won financial damages. Wood was born into slavery with the Toosie family in northern Kentucky sometime between 1818 and 1820. As a teenager, she was sold to Louisville to French immigrant William Sirode, who took her to New Orleans. After Sirode returned to France, with his wife, Jane Sirode brought Wood to Ohio, a free state. Jane Sirode registered Wood as free in 1848. In 1853, William Sirode's daughter and son-in-law, Josephine, and Robert White wanted to profit by recapturing Wood. They hired Zebulon Ward, a deputy sheriff in Covington, Kentucky, to kidnap Wood and sell her. Ward conspired with Wood's employer to bring Wood to the Kentucky side of the Ohio River where they captured her under the terms of the Fugitive Slave Act of 1850. Wood was not entitled to a trial or to testify on her own behalf. However, Wood resisted by persuading an innkeeper to file a lawsuit on her behalf. Many of us are familiar with the movie 12 Years a Slave, where a freed black man was tricked into slavery and served 12 years in bondage. Well, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, that is not a unique situation. That was actually a practice during slavery. Where freed men, women, and children were kidnapped and put into slavery, even though they were free. Wood was enslaved at Brandon Hall in Mississippi with the lawsuit over. Wood was taken in 1855 to Nashets, Mississippi, where she was sold to Gerald Brandon, the son of the former Mississippi governor. Wood worked in cruel conditions in the cotton fields and in her home on Brandon's plantations and gave birth to her son. At the end of the Civil War, when the Union Army arrived to liberate slaves in the area, Brandon marched his slaves to Texas to escape. Wood remained enslaved to him until 1869, when she was finally freed to return to the Cincinnati area. In 1870, Wood began the litigation process to sue Zebulon Ward in federal court in Cincinnati. The trial Wood v. Ward took place in April 1878. Twelve white jurors entered a federal courtroom presided over by Judge Philip Swing in Cincinnati, Ohio to deliver the verdict in a now forgotten lawsuit about American slavery. The plaintiff was Henrietta Wood. The defendant was Zebulon Ward, a white man who had enslaved Wood 25 years before. She was suing him for $20,000 in reparations. Two days earlier, the jury had watched as Wood took the stand. Her son, Arthur, who lived in Chicago, was in the courtroom. Born into bondage in Kentucky, Wood testified she had been granted her freedom in Cincinnati in 1848. But five years later, she was kidnapped by Ward, who sold her, and she ended up enslaved on a Texas plantation until after the Civil War. She finally returned to Cincinnati in 1869, a free woman, she had not forgotten Ward and sued him the following year. The trial began after eight years of litigation, leaving Wood to wonder if she would ever get justice. Now she watched nervously as the 12 jurors returned to their seats. Finally, they announced a verdict that few expected. We, the jury, in the above entitled cause, do fine for the plaintiff and assesses her damages in the premises at $2,500. Though a fraction of what Wood had asked for, the amount remains the largest known award ever granted by a U.S. court in restitution for the enslavement of any black person in America. Wood and her lawyer, Harvey Myers, asked for $20,000 in restitution and the jury awarded her 
The amount is equal to 65,500 in the year 2021. Her case was supported by Lafcadio O'Hearn of the Cincinnati Commercial. Following the trial, Wood moved to Chicago to be with her son, Arthur H. Sims. She used the restitution to help pay for him to attend Union College of Law, now Northwestern University, Pritzker School of Law. Unfortunately, Wood's successful trial did not begin a trend of similar reparations cases, and though it received national press coverage at the time, was largely forgotten in the following years. In 2019, W. Caleb McDaniel, a professor of history at Rice University, used court records and archives to research and publish a book about Wood's life called Sweet Taste of Liberty, a true story of slavery and restitution. The $2,500 verdict, the largest ever of its kind, offers evidence of the generational impact such awards can have. Wood's name never made it into the history books. When she died in 1912, her suit was already forgotten by all except her son. Today, it remains virtually unknown, even as reparations for slavery are once again in the headlines. In an interview Woods gave to reporters in the 1870s, she says, I can't quite tell my age, Wood recalled in a newspaper interview in 1876, but she knew she was born enslaved to the Tuzi family between 1818 and 1820. In 1834, the teenager was bought by a merchant in Louisville and taken from her family. Then, in 1848, Jane Sirode went to a county courthouse and registered Wood as free. I was granted my God-given rights to freedom, Wood later said, and my papers were recorded. She would one day recall that period of her life as a sweet taste of liberty. By the 1850s, the interstate slave trade was booming, and the whites saw dollar signs whenever they thought of Wood. All they needed was someone to do the dirty work of enslaving her again. Zebulon Ward was their man a native Kentuckian who had recently moved to Covington, just across the Ohio River from Cincinnati. Ward became a deputy sheriff in 1853. Between 1820 and 1860, nearly one million people were sold down the river. Ward planned to make Wood the latest victim of this trade, but she resolved to fight. Wood secretly told her story to a sympathetic innkeeper who followed her to Lexington, where a lawsuit was filed on her behalf asserting that she was free. Wood was never allowed to testify, however, and Ward denied her claims. Her official freedom papers at a courthouse in Cincinnati had been destroyed in an 1849 fire, and her kidnappers had confiscated her personal copy. The case was eventually dismissed. In the eyes of Kentucky law, Wood was a slave. Sounds like a cover-up to me. In our quest for reparations today, I think it's a good idea that we take a cue from Henrietta Wood. We research our family history. We get the documented evidence and proof of enslavement in our families. And we take our case to the courts of the United States of America. As we know that we are entitled to reparations. Considering the precedent set in this case, we use this picture because there are no available pictures of the great Henrietta Wood. Why wait for an organization to come together on our behalf and sue when we can do it on our own? Thank you, Miss Henrietta Wood, for showing us the way. The Black Excellence and Abundance Channel, where black history is every day. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And remember, thou art rich.